Hi everyone, welcome to another exciting edition of Words, Images, and Worlds. I'm delighted to be talking with comic creator Brent Larson on this episode. Brent is known for a particular series, I believe, uh, Kalis. Am I saying that correctly? You are. Fantastic, fantastic. And that's with Silverline. Am I saying that correctly? No, no. Are... <laughs> Silverline is actually uh, a ah. word that means no, I'm just kidding. Yes. Ah, okay. Great, great. Um, well, thanks for jumping on and talking with me. And so by means of a first question to get us acquainted with this work of yours, how did you decide that comics was the space for you? You know, I have read comics since I was in the single digits. Uh, yeah, yeah, and that's same here. With, yeah, I started with the, the, the comic strips, uh, Peanuts, uh, loved Peanuts, loved... Uh, far side loved garfield loved all of that and the collections and then i started uh getting into gi joe and started reading gi joe and then <laughs> this happened for so many in my generation we went to our bookstore and the current issue of gi joe was not there and i didn't want to leave empty-handed so i picked up a copy of the avengers and so i just loved comics i i think pretty much my whole life and so when i was um thinking through um i do i write uh, screenplays as part of my job now <clears throat> and as i was thinking through this story that i had had about um it kind of came out of the idea of okay so superman arrived on earth and uh mm -hmm. sun gave him all these powers but what would happen if people from our planet went to another planet would they get powers and how would they then proceed to screw everything up? And so right, right. Um, I just, this idea kind of just kept percolating in my brain and I thought about making it into a feature script, but frankly, it just seemed both too big and um, too, um, how do I put this? I loved that comics presented uh, an opportunity to tell a story that was big, but was also uh, mine, and I wouldn't need to find investors. I wouldn't need to uh -huh. try to talk, you know, I wouldn't have to try to make it on a shoestring budget and then try to make it again if it hit big. And I could just do it in a medium that I understood and was fun. And Anyone who says comics are for kids only uh, obviously know nothing about comics, and I have nothing to say to them. But for the rest of them, I'm like, hey, man, <laughs> yes, I can tell a very grown-up adult story with adult themes, uh, adult problems, uh, um, real meaning, mm -hmm. uh, commentary on today's living, uh, and I can do it uh, using a comic book. Why not? Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm with you on that 100%. It's a medium. It is a medium. It is. Yeah. <laughs> um, so what, what types of stories are you particularly drawn to as a, as a reader and creator? Well, I am drawn to stories that, for one, um, I have a very dramatic human story. I believe humans, we humans have a lot in common. Uh, and mm -hmm. as such, that's why a particular story can hit anybody from any racial background, ethnic background, uh, even any time period. Mm -hmm. um, the stories that have been told hundreds of years ago can still move us now. And, and uh, that's why I've, um, and that, I mean, you could take that to mean, well, I just like any story ever told. <laughs> I get really annoyed when I go to see a movie that doesn't even try to move me, yeah. that um, instead tries to dazzle me with flash. <laughs> and um, I just get so bored with those movies so fast. And frankly, it's the same with comics. I've read plenty of comics where halfway through I'm like, these people are, their story is too thin, but they're really just trying to blow me away with how dark they are or mm -hmm. how, you know, how much bad language that, you know, hey, I'm an adult. I can talk like this and you should care about what I don't. I'm sorry. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, 
So there's that. Uh, stories that have something to say, even if it's something they may disagree with politically or morally or spiritually. Um, if somebody really has something to say, I am I, I, I'm surprised how much I want to hear what it is. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. Um, so when I encounter that, that really means something. But having said that, I also really enjoy uh, a lot of genre stuff. Uh, if it's, you know, telling me something interesting about the world, uh, the the authors inhabit. I don't mean the one they created, but the ones they live in today. You know, if I can <laughs> connect the two, then I'm really pretty happy about that. Um, I love horror fiction. Um, when I write prose stories, they inevitably skew in that direction. Um, and um, yeah, that's that's probably what I like best. I'd say. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I love that idea of like, even if you're not agreeing with something, if it's told in a compelling way, that that idea of hearing people. I was teaching debate today in a okay. class, and so that that vibes with my day in in a lot of ways. Um, curious about how Kalis found its way and how you found your way to Silverline. Well, that was a fun story. And frankly, as far as comic creating goes, I am pretty much a novice. I actually have two books out now with Silverline. One is mm -hmm. Kalis and one that we've only gotten one issue out so far, but the artist is drawing up the second is Cape Town, which is a little bit more of a regular um, um, superhero story. But um I met Roland Mann, the publisher uh, of uh, Silverline, and uh, also the creator of Cat and Mouse, which is one of the flagship mm -hmm. titles of Silverline. Mm -hmm. uh, we were introduced through a mutual friend, and uh, Roland uh, was uh, in the industry from back in the 80s and 90s when I, as a kid, really um, – I'm. Uh, he, uh, that's when I started to really get into comics. And so he and I, you know, I, I would mention the heroes, hero creators that, that I was so eager to read back then. And he would know who I was talking about and would uh -huh. have worked with them. And I'm like, wow, this is so cool. So, <laughs> so we would talk for hours and we had met at this Japanese restaurant several times. They're sitting and talking. And then <clears throat> I just told him one day I have, I'm a writer too. Um, I have worked on screenplays, but uh, I've always had this idea for a comic book story. It's kind of like a sci-fi story. And he's like, well, I'll talk you through it. So he told me how to write the script and he, he uh, told me how to find um, the penciler, inker, in this case was the same guy. And, and um, he had feedback on the scripts that I wrote, that I showed him. And I, I laid out the whole thing for him and, and he was like, "Well, I'm starting up Silverline again. Would you want to be one of the in the lineup?" And I'm like, it sure beat my other plan, which was to put it in a drawer and wait for <laughs> something. I had, I didn't even know what I was waiting for, but this was much better. So I was like, "Yeah, all right, that sounds great." So, and that was pretty much it. <laughs> Awesome, awesome. Well, yeah. glad it's not in the drawer. I'm glad that connection took place. Yeah, I have a few things in a drawer. They're not going to budge. <laughs> so I'm almost waiting for a fire. It'll <laughs> take care of all of those dreams just going nowhere. No, I'm yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's part of the creative journey, too. Absolutely. It is. Sorry, guys. It's not all flash and buzz. So. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Uh, well, I think I have one more official question and we can touch anything that we might have missed. And that is, where can people go to find out more social media, websites and, and cons and other such spaces and things? So if you uh, one way to, to uh, find out more about Kalis and where you can get it, you can go to SilverlineComics.com, uh, which has all the, the books uh, and uh, what uh, uh, what Silverline does is they uh, crowds crowdsource all the books. Uh, usually, two at a time. They'll do a Kickstarter for uh, each series, uh, and uh, that is how actually um, for Kalis we've done 
uh, we're now uh, going to be rolling out, hopefully before too much longer, issue the eighth issue. And uh, so uh, we grouped them into uh, arcs. The, the first one is just Kalis. You can actually get that in a trade paperback also. <clears throat> and then the second arc is called Kalis Achilles has landed. And that is, uh, so we've got, come, we're working on the third of that four issue arc. And uh, there are links at, on silverlinecomics.com to uh, all the books, I believe, where you can uh, pick them up. Uh, you can hear more uh, from, uh, well, I talk about mine. I'm, um, you can find me on Instagram. I'm at brent.vector. And uh, you can find me there. I'm also on Facebook. Uh, and uh, that's, that's probably it. So. <laughs> those are the spaces um well yeah. thank you so much brent thank you for stopping by and talking with me for a few minutes and glad to talk with you anytime my pleasure i appreciate it it was fun <laughs>